Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I come bearing props. That's another prop. So is that. We're gonna zoom in on those in a little bit. Because in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my writing process. Now, some people have been asking about this partially because I use a zero drafting and fast drafting sort of method. I use my Aeon timeline. I print out my novels and people are confused, understandably, about what the heck I'm doing. Today I hope to illuminate this for you a little bit. So the first thing I do is that I write my zero draft. Now the reason I call it a zero draft is because I only go into the story knowing maybe three, four chapters of the beginning, a little bit about the middle, and I know how I want the book to end. For y'all, it might have been reversed, but whatever. So it's not quite that I'm pantsing the novel in the more true sense of the made up term. I know a little bit about what I'm doing, but I don't know a lot of it about what I'm doing. This is where I use Scrivener to kind of like sort out where I think the scenes are. I feel free to sort of drag and drop as I write. I write out of order. I just go for it. Now I say write out of order, really I I'm usually writing somewhat chronologically while skipping the scenes I don't know. And the reason I call it a zero draft is because so much of it is open to change. I have to write the novel in order to understand what story I'm trying to tell. The changes made between my zero draft and the final product, it would look like a completely different book. 90% of it will not stay the same. My main character could completely change their motivations. My main character could completely change. I could decide that the side character was actually the interesting one after I wrote 30,000 words. That's what I'm saying. So I call it a zero draft. It is a discovery draft and I fast draft it because I write fast. I have to revise a lot and it takes me a while to revise, but we're gonna get to that part. Now, after I have written the zero draft, I let it rest for two months. If you've been around a while, you know that I really love to give that advice. Give it a full rest. Give it two months of rest between when you finish the draft and when you pick it back up again to make some changes. Because you need to now look at this draft as a reader would. What do I like? What don't I like? What do I wanna change? A key thing here is that I will sometimes write myself a note immediately after I finish the zero draft with information I already know I wanna change. Just as like a, hey, FYI. Oh. I'm missing something. I tend to do this in my writer notebook. People have asked what is in my writer notebook. Sometimes it's author tube stuff. Sometimes it's character outlines. Sometimes it's a pro and cons list about my story. Look, it's all sorts of, oh, I messed it up. Whoops, look, it's all sorts of things, okay? It's just whatever I'm needing to write down to work through it. Much like I have to write the zero draft to understand what I wanna do, sometimes I have to write out my thoughts by hand to understand what I'm going for. Now, we've completed the zero draft, we've waited two months, it is time to work on the, in quotes, first draft. Some people don't like that I use this terminology. I'm looking at you, my friend who I know watches my videos and tells me every time that he hates it, but guess what? I don't care. So now we're on to my first draft stage. I would say between the first draft and the final draft, 40 to 50% could still change, but like I'm making progress. I know my main character is better. I know their motivations. I know their histories. I know my minor characters better. I know my world better. I know a lot of stuff better, but not perfectly. And I don't write a lot of description and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we finished the first draft. All of this once again is in Scrivener. Now between the zero draft and the first draft, I actually make an entirely new file with new words and none of it is the same. <laughs> because again, so much of it's gonna change. I will sometimes go through my Scrivener file and like highlight some things that I'm like, oh, that was just a good line. Sometimes I accidentally write a gem of a thing. Not often, very infrequently, but sometimes I do. And sometimes I wanna keep it. So then I'll highlight it, I'll bring it over to the first draft. But again, they're totally different documents. They're, yeah. They gotta be separate. I rewrite, I completely rewrite the story. All right, now that my first draft is done, I'm gonna rest it for two months and then we're going to write the second draft. So here's where I take the first draft and I'm just adding words to it. I'm adding stories to it. I'm adding the subplots, I'm adding better description, I'm adding more scenes that I've thought up, but I'm working within the same document now. I've made progress. And during the second draft stage is when I turn to my Aeon timeline because inevitably, I will have effed up the timeline completely. You wanna go outside? Go ahead. Ma ha ha ha. No, okay. I'm going, I'm going. I use the timeline because basically 
Scrivener's not enough. The drag and drop features aren't enough. I will have so completely messed up the timeline in terms of like the days and the weeks and the time space that need to span and who, which characters are where and everything that I need something. Before this, I used an Excel spreadsheet, but now I have the Aeon timeline and it has been well worth the purchase for me. They also do have a trial run as does Scrivener if you want to give them a go before you buy them. If you find that you like me could use them or you like the look of them. Now, it is time to point out a notable exception. Project Purple, it's pink, it's fine. <laughs> Project Purple was what I worked on for NaNoWriMo 2018 and my first draft was actually surprisingly solid. I didn't have a zero draft is what I'm saying. There was no zero draft, the first draft was solid, this is the second draft. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because at the second draft, once I finish it, I do this. I print them out because I now need to see them in a different format than my computer screen. I think it helps a lot mentally to read it in a way your brain hasn't read it before. I know it's all words on a page, but I promise there's something to it. At least there is for me, that's been my experience. I have made several videos of me printing out stories before actually maybe not this one ah! okay it's fine this is why I get the coil bound so that I don't completely F it up when I do stuff like that. <laughs> I have made videos before printing out both of these and so I will just go ahead and link them if you want to know my exact process but I use like an Office Depot, Office Max staples sort of thing. If you have a printer that works better than mine I'm sure you could just print it out yourself but I do like the coil bound and I like having this little ooh, bit because it protects my document because I I need that I need it so once again I let it rest for two months and after the two month period is passed this is when it's debatable about when I start to get beta readers feedback for project purple I got beta reader feedback after the second draft so they both read what I have here I don't always do that sometimes I wait until the third draft to get beta reader feedback and at this point I'm once again adding more description I'm making sure that if I haven't named characters at this stage I go ahead and give them a name I want them to have a name before I give them to beta readers ideally. I have done this before, notably in Project Purple when I didn't name them, but like I don't advise that. I gave it to people that like one of them was my co-writer so she knows my process and it's fine. <laughs> so all the while I'm always adding in more description because I write very short so like my first drafts tend to be a good 20,000 words less than they ideally should be for the novel. Whether that's they end up being 40,000 and need to be 60,000 because they're contemporary or they're 60,000 and need to be 80,000 because they're a YA fantasy. Going forward from that stage, any and all additional drafts are just because something didn't work based off of my beta reader feedback, something didn't work based off of how I read, something needed to be changed, I thought of something better. We're getting to the point where it's more just me finding better ways to say things. I might finally be working on the actual diction. I might finally be working on particular word choice, which is the same as diction, but whatever, we're gonna go there. Before I was looking at story, overall story, and now I'm looking at the words, I wanna make sure it flows right. I want to make sure the pacing's good. Uh, pacing is something that I kind of work on throughout because pacing for me could mean like major or minor plot points need to be told differently. But like we're getting into the nitty gritty as we advance here. All right, editing Kate. I just want to say here real quick that the importance of the thing, so I find all the story stuff is more important than the actual words. So I will continue to redraft as needed until I get to a point where I feel like the story base is solid. Sometimes that includes making a revision change because the villain's actions actually weren't making sense in draft four because I changed something in draft three and now I need to go back and fix some other stuff like that kind of thing. I don't focus on the words themselves a whole lot until I'm positive that those words and those scenes are going to stay in the novel. But having said that, I do try and slowly make it better, such as always kind of adding description in. Certain novels will require certain things, so I don't have any one like on draft three I'm focusing primarily on pacing, or draft three I'm focusing entirely on making sure the magic system makes sense. Like I don't have any particular thing. I sometimes wonder if part of the reason for that is because I write in so many different genres, but ultimately it just comes down to a story by story basis for me. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, I will take you back.
I don't have any good answer for how long certain drafts will take and sometimes it's a surprise to me when they don't take as long. Certain stories are going to allow you to write stuff differently. So like my YA contemporary Project Purple is told entirely from first person point of view, the girl is writing a book. So I have a whole lot more leniency in the choice, but it also means that I really have to nail the voice. Like this voice has to be strong. You have to like get an idea of the character so fully from reading the words. Like it's a different kind of focus than say my YA fantasy where it's the told in third person point of view and I need to give it a certain kind of charm that make it feel more fantasy-esque or whatever. With my co-written project, which is like a new adult contemporary, it's the same kind of thing where the character's voice is really what's making it pop and that's what I'm going to be working on in the other drafts if it's not already popping. Everything from here on out is making sure that I can make it as strong as I freaking can. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's my process. Hopefully that kind of helps. What's your process? <laughs> Not everyone's process is going to work for other people, obviously. My process is something that's kind of been turned into after time, figuring out what works for me and figuring out what doesn't. That's part of the reason I enjoy doing these other writers' routines. Now there's a distinction between routine and process, but oftentimes some of the routine, like in the JK Rowling routine, she had a very particular plotting process, this kind of plotting table that I'd never used before. And if I continue to do that, I would put that as part of my process much like Aeon Timeline is in between draft two and three for me. So yeah, please do comment down below. Let me know what your writing process looks like. Let me know how much it's changed over time. Once upon a time, I have thought of myself as a pantser. I've thought of myself as a plotter before. And ultimately, the more and more I write, the more I realize I don't know. I don't know. And I've also learned that certain stories are going to be different than other stories. I have written so many more drafts of Project Blue, the Meridian Maps, and I'm also going to continue writing more drafts of this as I work on the sequels. Because I have the luxury of doing it, I can include more foreshadowing from the fifth book into this one to kind of just give you some hints. Whereas Project Purple, I haven't needed as many drafts. It's a standalone. There's just, there's some differences here. There's some differences. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being curious about my writing process. And I'm personally excited because the great thing about AuthorTube for me and making these videos is that I get to see how my process changes over time and between stories. And all of this is kind of just like more research in some weird way. Yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all very soon with a new video. Bye. Okay, did I do a good intro? I don't even remember. I'm usually adding a lot of stuff. I'm usually adding a lot of stuff from the first draft. Let me say that again. I just want to say here real quick that the word choice is something... I just want to say here real quick that sometimes... Oh my gosh.